The sun wasn't fully up yet. The plane couldn't be seen from ashore. The only other man aboard was the pilot. He was the man who persuaded me to come along. Persuaded, did I say? I really didn't have any choice. I was told that I was needed desperately at a certain place on the Caribbean coast. The welfare of the United States was at stake. And I went. I had been thoroughly briefed on the course that I was to take underwater. I had been given an exact compass course. This was supposed to take me to my first sea mark. There was the buoy I'd hoped to see. I was right on course. My instructions were to swim 200 yards past the buoy on this heading. This would take me almost to my destination. But following a compass course underwater isn't easy. From here, I was supposed to be able to see the place where I was to rendezvous. On the nose. Now, if I could just get into that house without being seen by anybody up or down the shore, I'd be all right. That is, if it was the right house. The boathouse attached to the main building fitted the description I'd been given. But that was true of a lot of houses along this shore. I expect a more friendly welcome than this. Why? Well, maybe after I give you a certain uh, five-digit number. Such as? 956-34. Name me three colors. Blue, magenta, and yellow. What's my name? I don't know. Thanks for coming. OK. You'll uh, find some dry clothes in the next room. All right. Send this in the clear. After standard call, say that Robert Douglas arrived for his vacation. We hope to get in a lot of enjoyable fishing. Sign off in the usual manner. It's a little loud, don't you think? Under the circumstances, it's the best we could do. I suppose I get used to it. I'm sorry I greeted you with gun in hand, but you never know. Oh, I understand. Well, my name's Mike Nelson. I suppose you know that. What's yours? Steve Walker. But, of course, that's not my real name. Oh, no? Well, I'm afraid I'm stuck with Mike Nelson. No, you're not. 
You're Robert Douglas, a geologist on vacation. This passport and these papers will prove it. Okay. I'm Robert Douglas. Boy, things sure happen fast sometimes. About 24 hours ago, I was in Los Angeles minding my own business. And a Washington official, a longtime friend of yours, dropped in to see you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and he described you and invited me for a little swim. You could have refused. You can still refuse. Oh, that's not the way my friend put it. I'd still like to know why I took that little swim. We're in a little Caribbean country that's friendly to our country. Now, if some other big power wants to anchor a yacht more than three miles offshore, this little country has no right to ask why or to poke around finding out. And technically, neither is our government, right? Right. But if a geologist on vacation named Robert Douglas gets curious as an individual... No international complications if he gets caught. Or if he gets killed. We don't count on your getting killed. No, neither do I. Well, what's the job, huh? There's an underwater installation going in here, putting any city in the U.S. within missile range. We want pictures of that installation, close up and in detail. Okay. When do I start? In two hours, with the change of tide. In the meantime, I suggest you establish yourself in the town as Robert Douglas. My information is that you've never been on this coast before, is that correct? Well, no one knows me here, if that's what you mean. But why can't I just, uh, be taking a vacation as Mike Nelson? Because he's an officer in the Coast Guard Auxiliary, that's why. Oh, yeah. See what you mean. <clears throat> this right? man's work is never done in one place. Neither is yours, huh? Oh, I'm on a vacation down here. Yeah, hey, your work's your vacation. You're down here on a job. I am, huh? Um, listen, old buddy, I'm always in the market for a good story. Oh, well, good luck. Look, Mike, I'll level with you. My wire server sent me down here on a tip. They did, huh? Why would a half a dozen foreign military attaches check into this hole? On vacation? Mm -mm. And why should you? I'm on my vacation. I don't buy that. You fit into this somewhere. Well, sure I fit into it. It's a great place for divers. Yeah, nice weather, warm, clear water. You got that in California? Uh, nothing like it is here, though. Look, my. Excuse me, a phone call. Uh, I'll uh, be right back.
finish that. That's the yard over there. Take a look. If you go over this side, they can't see you. I'll meet you back here at 345. Got your bearings? Yeah. You got your motor fixed? Yeah. Good luck. Tell me, is uh, where's Mike Nelson? Who? What do you mean, who? Mike Nelson, the fellow that was in the boat with you. I was the only one in the boat. What are you talking about? Uh, 45 showing. It's a 38. It comes in handy sometimes down here for anything that might need killing. Like Mike Nelson? What's the matter with you? You're an American, aren't you? Who's Mike Nelson? Look, I was with him just an hour ago until I got suckered away by a phony phone call. Then I saw him hustle in that car and then in the boat with you. What'd you do, use that gun on him? Mister, you're dreaming. Oh, is that so, huh? Well, I'm gonna go down to the police and tell them my dreams. Uh, you don't mind, do you? Swimming with two underwater cameras slowed me down. But I had to get as many shots as I could and I couldn't change rolls of film underwater. Everything looked quiet. Then I thought I saw an odd-looking cable near the waterline under the stern of the yacht. I could see the watch officer on deck. I knew he wasn't watching for weather. He was there to see that any nosy visitors like me would only make a one-way trip. short swim would take me under the yacht for a close look. I hoped that our small boat had been far enough from the yacht to escape detection. The water was pleasantly warm. If it weren't for the job ahead of me, I'd have gone sightseeing. My newspaper friend was bound and determined to help me. By now, he had gotten to the local police and talked one of their officials into going out to the yacht with him. I was moving quietly underwater toward this strange yacht. I still didn't see the missile launcher that I was to photograph. When I got under the hull, I realized the cable that I'd seen led right down to the launcher. I followed the cable down. What I saw resembled our own equipment, but was obviously foreign. There were many electronic control centers. It was essential to get good close-ups of everything that I could. By now, the police were on their way out to the yacht. With your permission, Capitan, we would like to look over your boat. Please assign a reason. We are looking for someone. Name? A Mike Nelson. Reason for belief that he is here. Well, what's all this talk? Let's get up there and search the boat. Watch, officer. Now, again, reason for belief that he is here. Because it came out near here in a motorboat, and then it came back without him. With your permission, Capitan, we will come aboard and look below. Lieutenant. 
We are in international waters. Beyond the three-mile limit, I can permit no search. I will consult with my superiors. This friend of yours, he is a military man? No, he's a civilian frogman. Thank you very much. Alert the underwater swimmers. I had photographed all the equipment but this part. The missiles could be activated by a nearby ship, or by a fishing boat, or a pleasure craft, like the yacht on the surface. The U.S. coast was less than a thousand miles away, and this missile launcher was a gun pointed straight at it. No wonder our government needed to know what was going on. I knew they must be from the ship. The odds were bad. I had to run for it, but the two cameras were a handicap. the camera that I hadn't used yet. Maybe I could divert one of my pursuers by dropping it. It worked. One of them dived for the camera. I still had the other man to deal with, and I had to do it before his buddy joined him again. Life gone, I was able to rip off his mask, and just in time. While his buddy helped him, I swam for the bottom. I had a plan. full of air for my tank. It was all I needed to get to where I wanted to go, the yacht. I had a hand grenade. To use my grenade, I wanted them in the water and me out of it.
two frogmen would be easy to manage now. They were still stunned from the explosion. I needed their air and their equipment. I removed their weight belts so they would float to the surface. While the crew of the yacht was rescuing them, I slipped away to meet Steve at our rendezvous point. What I had seen was enough to confirm Steve's suspicions completely, even before we developed the film. Send it in the clear. We want everybody to know what they're up to. We have an hour before the seaplane comes back. Take us home. Why don't you look up that newspaper friend of yours and soothe his nerves? He's awfully worried about you. That's a good idea. Do you mean it wasn't you in that car or going in that house or in that boat? Suppose I have a double here. Oh, man, I, I could have sworn it was you. Well, I'm sure sorry I caused you so much concern. I thought you were going to be in that phone booth for quite a while. You know, I was anxious to get my diving. How did you make out diving? Oh, I just took some pictures, was all. Get anything interesting? Yeah, I think it is, as a matter of fact. Hey, mind if I take your picture? Mine? Yeah. Well, give us a little smile, there, boy. That's it. All right, now. I'll give you printers when I get back to L.A., huh? Thanks. And uh, maybe I'll give you some of those other pictures. You might find them pretty interesting. Well, nice seeing you down here, huh? See you back in the States, boy. Hello there. I'm Lloyd Bridges. You know, three-fifths of the world is covered by the sea. And how little most of us know about that underwater world. Go below with us again next week, huh? For another thrilling adventure in Sea Hunt.